episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Yes, as you can see, I've been temporarily evicted from my own study, so <sighs> I had to go a bit old school and, uh, um, yeah, well, for those of you who remember, um, or <laughs> care to look back at some of the older episodes, you may well remember that I used to shoot the uh, the episodes here in the kitchen, so it's, uh, yeah, I'm going back a bit in time, shall we say, but... Um, Obviously, the different camera and different setup I've got, I can't quite replicate that, so I'm a bit on the skew, as you can see, but, uh, um, well, like I said, uh, the, the location at the end of the day is fairly immaterial, it's, it's the message that counts, so, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, hopefully uh, normal service will be resumed uh, next, next week. Um, so, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, commented and liked and all that kind of stuff, it certainly was a... A mixed bag of, of comments, uh, you know, some uh, proclaiming um, love for, for the little range and others not so much. So, and um, so I think it was a really interesting show. You know, like I, like I said when I was doing it, you know, it was a, a balanced appraisal, should we say. And uh, yeah, it's horses for courses at the end of the day. So, and, and I thought thought it made a, an interesting an interesting episode. So. Um, Talking of interesting episodes, uh, let's have a look at uh, what we're up to today. Well, again, another interesting episode of the show. Um, well, they all are really, aren't they, at the end of the day? Well, I like to think so anyway. Um, this week's episode of the show uh, kind of came about because uh, it, it was part. It was a Twitter tasting, and uh, unfortunately these days I don't get invited to the, uh, the Twitter tastings anymore. So, uh, because me and Mac Myra are like that... Um, I kind of pinged an email off to Alex saying, what's all this reserve cask business, you know, uh, um, can you send me the samples, you know, I'd, I'd like to do an episode of the show on them. Um, and uh, lo and behold, they indeed turned up. So, what is this reserve cask business then, you, you, you're probably wondering. Well, it came with a nice little leaflet, as you can see. Now, um, this, the reserve cask is essentially casks that you can buy from the distillery. Um, now, uh, <laughs> you're not going to buy sort of like hoggies and things like that. I mean, you're talking several thousand pounds, but what the distillery is selling are small 30 litre casks, you know, blood tubs or firkins or whatever they've been called throughout the years. And um, you can basically buy them initially for a payment of between about 1400 and to just over two and a bit grand um so in essence should yield you around about sort of what 40 50 bottles possibly depending upon um how much the angels nick um and of course then obviously once you decide you're going to bottle it you've got to obviously uh, pay the duty and the the, the the vat etc etc so i think i saw somebody work out uh, that it's sort of moderately would work out between about sort of 60 to about 80 odd pounds a bottle all in at the end of the day and if that's something that sounds really interesting to you I mean you know um, a lot of people buy casks uh, you know private individuals or certainly they did in the past but then you're left uh, with about two three hundred bottles and what the hell are you going to do with those you know so what McNair have decided is that uh, first off you pick uh, your spirit, whether you want to go for what they've now termed the elegant, which is the unpeated, or the smoky, which I think is pretty much self-explanatory. You then choose which cask you want it filled into, so you can choose from uh, ex-American oak or ex-bourbon, uh, ex-oloroso, um, gravity, and I'm thinking, what the hell is a gravity cask for God's sake? Is it sort of, you know, um, is it a sort of a really light cask that kind of hovers in the air and defies gravity? You know, I mean, that would be that would be pretty impressive, but no, actually, that's not like that at all. But uh, a gravity cask apparently is um, a cla what their classic hybrid cask. It's an American oak body with uh, Swedish oak ends, so you can specify that. Um, or you can specify what they call pre-stored, which basically means it's spent four years. Um, in cask already, um, one imagines a hoggy or a barrel, um, and then going on into um, one of these small uh, 30 litre casks. So basically, for the tweet tasting, the, the, the distillery kindly sent a selection of uh, the different cask types and, uh, and different spirit types to kind of give you an idea of what the spirit is, 
going to be like after a length of time in these small casks. Now bear in mind, we're talking a lot of wood to spirit here. So you ain't going to want to leave them in that cask for a, a long time because, well, you know how quickly sort of spirit can pick up um, pick up the oak. So, so basically what we have, like I said, is we have a selection of casks. We have a, a, a lovely sample of their new make. Uh, enjoy tasting the new make um, uh, unfortunately uh, you'll notice on the uh, image on the the, 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 the the title picture I've used a picture of the the bit hund or the, the the white dog bottling they do which is this which is their new make but what they water it down to 46.1 this is the the full fat real McCoy new make it's the uh, 63 percent but Anyway, we'll obviously get on to uh, what uh, the, the the lineup. So I think this is going to be really interesting because you know if you if you're going to fork out you know up to you know, two grand odd for a cask and you're going to sort of wait for it and uh, you're going to want an idea of how long you should really leave it. And of course, the distillery will kindly send you samples on the anniversary of each uh, each year, so you can sort of keep. Uh, tabs on said cask and sort of go right okay I think that's at the uh, the, the right point in uh, uh, its evolution but like I said bear in mind you're not going to want to leave it in there and of course this then brings up the whole issue which I think I tackled with um, oh the, that uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss distillery um, the name completely eludes me the fact, basically it's yes you can have a lot of oak character you can generate a lot of oak character but if your spirit isn't uh, mature hasn't developed from maturity you're just going to end up with a sort of like a mouthful of oak and young spirit and is that the, the what happens here well we shall indeed find out but that's always something you have to kind of keep in the back of your mind that uh, um, yes you might have a lot of oak character in your spirit but it may well not actually be yeah, but anyway, um, so uh, that's that's enough waffle. I think uh, let's um, have a look at the lineup. Right. Okay. You may notice a di slightly different glass. This was the uh, the rather nice glass that uh, came with the pack. So um, a bit, uh, honestly, a big big thank you to Mac Meyer and uh, you know uh, really appreciate uh, them. Mm sending me these samples and it didn't have to um, so we're going to kick off with the new make this is 63% um, uh, it's an elegant new make i.e. the unpeated uh, it was distilled in September of 2013 so I'm kind of quite looking forward to that because I always like a bit of new make um, the second bottling we'll be looking at is uh, the gravity cask which like I said is the hybrid American oak and Swedish cask this is uh, right so it's elegant um, spirit to start off with um, it was um, uh, distilled in May of 2012 uh, now I'm assuming that these had all been bottled pr previously because this was allegedly bottled in November of 2017 so these were probably either things that had been cast I mean because you may well know that when Angela was making up the sort of um, the, the, the blend of cask types for the various bottlings they do, they quite often use the reserve casks and I'm guessing they're going to have a, an intensity of oak so you know again it's sort of like well are they really a component will they be you know will it be sort of pleasant to drink I don't know um, so this one like I said this is the elegant gravity reserve cask distilled in 2012 bottled uh, November 2017 five years old and 55.2%. Uh, the next one we'll be looking at is, now this has been labelled as um, an elegant pre-stored uh, reserve cask, but I've had tasted it and I get pee. So I'm wondering whether it's possibly smoke tails. Um, but if it was smoke tails, I'd put smoke tails back anyway. So this is possibly smoky, possibly elegant. Um, and like I said, so it spent four years in an X uh, 200 litre bourbon cask. This was then filled into the 30 litre X bourbon cask in October 2018, bottled in May of 2019. So it's kind of four years and seven months. So it's four years in um, the um, 200 litre cask 
seven months effectively finishing in um, a, um, uh, an ex Bourbon um, 30 litre cask. So, interesting, I think. Right, uh, so the next uh, bottling we're going to be looking at is definitely smoky, it says so on the label. Um, so, this is a um, ex American oak. So, smoky ex American oak distilled in November of 2012, bottled in January of 2019. And so this was five years old and it was bottled at 56.9%. And the last one, as you're probably going to guess, is an Oloroso. Always leave the, uh, the chunky monsters till the end. So this is smoky uh, Oloroso reserve cask. It was distilled in April of 2010, bottled in October of 2016, six years old. And alarmingly, the ABV had dropped 40.4%. Oh, bloody hell, man. I mean, that was a, um, that must have been, I mean, I think that was aged in the mines. And again, I mean, all the information is there. So all, most of these have been aged in the mines, apart from, I think, um, the uh, Elegant, which is aged in the forest. Um, but you would have thought that the mines were, w w would be pretty cold, so you wouldn't have expected that kind of um, loss of ABV, but there you go, that's... That's the wonderful world of whiskey for you. So that was obviously bottled because it was getting a little bit uh, dangerously low. So, so there you go. That's the, the lineup. I think this is going to be really intriguing. And um, so let's uh, kick off with a bit of new Mac. Right. Okay. So new Mac. Let's see what the nose gives us. Okay. There's a little bit of faintiness. I mean, you kind of expect that. Um, a little bit of an off the still note, but oh, you know, that is really fruity, really juicy, tropical, peach, pear, oh, pineapple. Um, oh, yeah, now, the, as you well know, Mac Myra is a lovely fruity spirit, and this just shows it in absolute space. Um, touch of apple blossom, little minerality, just a smidgen. Um, what a base spirit. I mean, you know, this is, you can see why it's bottled um, and sold at Vitland, um, because, you know, it's, yeah, pretty much drinkable now. I mean, that is just such a clean, lovely nose. Let's see what parts like. That's a lot of alcohol. Um, obviously not quite so exuberantly fruity. The pear and the pineapple kind of come through quite nicely. Barley, minerals, but oh, 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 that's masked, that's intense. Really clean again, there's a little oiliness, it's balanced, it is beautiful. It is an absolutely gorgeous spirit. Um, Getting an almost kind of like white rose petal kind of note um, on the aftertaste. It is just kind of sort of slowly evaporating into my cheeks, and uh, it is just absolutely stunning. So um, let's put a little bit of water with it, and uh, and like I said, um, uh, you can buy this. You can buy the Vithund bottling. So if you you know feel the need to uh, try uh, a new make um, Macamara, this is probably as close as you will get to it. Um, more barley now, less fruit. Um, the fruitiness is still there, but the barley has come through. There's a touch of almost straw, I would guess. Um, or sort of straw, dried grass, that kind of thing. Um, still an absolutely beautiful spirit, it has to be said. So we'll pass on now. Still wonderfully fruity, not quite so tropical. Again, a little, I'm getting more barley, but I'm getting a little bit more banana now. Um, apricot, less of that sort of tropical pineapple kind of character. Um, it's longer, it's a little oilier uh, now on the finish. Um, 
But again, that is a beautiful spirit, and you can see, you can see why uh, why their their uh, their whiskies are you know so damn good. Because when you're starting off with really quality raw materials like that, as long as you don't put it into rubbish casks, which they don't, um, you know you're, you're pretty much onto a winner there. So mm, good start. So let's move on to the Gravity Reserve cask. So like I said, this is a, a 30 litre American oak or uh, ex-Bourbon cask, sorry, um, with the Swedish oak end. So this has been um, maturing for five years. Let's see what the nose gives. Oak. Um, actually, bloody loads of it. Absolutely huge amounts of oak. I mean, loads of vanilla, loads of... Of, of, of oak, you know, it's just saturated. I mean, I, I'm. There's a bit of barley. There's, there's, there's no fruit. I mean, it's just, you know, um, it's all American. It's ex bourbon. I'm getting that sort of almost corny um, kind of note. Um, there's a little bit of spiciness there, which I, which may well be coming from the um, the Swedish oak ends, but. Um, it's, it's, it's butter city. I mean, it's butter, it's vanilla. No, um, that had been left for far too long in that cask. Um, and, and underneath it, yes, the spirit is a bit, I wouldn't say fainty. I mean, because obviously the new make isn't very, very fainty to start off with. It's got a nice cleanliness to it, but you can, you can feel the youthfulness kind of behind all of that oak and I, although I, I won't say it's imbalanced um, well, well yes I will actually it is, it is bloody imbalanced it's all oak and, and nothing else but um, you know it's not kind of it's just kind of doesn't feel like it's um, it's not come together I mean that's that's the problem um, and it's just basically showing that these small casks are just too intense for, for, for even for five years. Um, five, five years, yeah, five years. I mean, right, okay, let's see what passes up. gripping me there it has to be said I mean that's really grippy tannins it's it's uh, again Oak City I'm just getting um, bourbony kind of corny notes I'm getting a bit of rye spice in which may well be from the Swedish oak possibly um, it's got a lovely tongue tingling finish it has to be said is uh, you know if you love oak and you want to taste oak and nothing else then you know that's that's your baby but to me that is just, just, yeah, you know, the, the oak has just basically hammered that spirit into oblivion. Um, and again, like I said at the beginning of the show, it, it, you can see why this particular cast type is used in a batting with other casts, because it makes sense, because, you know, it gives you that real intensity of oak, but by basically batting it in with, you know, stuff that's been aged in larger casks, it's all about the balancing of the flavours. And so, to me, this just tastes like a component. Um, let's see if uh, water has done it any, uh, any favours. Um, essentially, no, it's pretty much stayed the same. It's still, it's still a real oak monster, um, a, a real bourbon monster. I mean, you know, if you were tasting this blind, you'd probably swear blind it was a, an American whiskey. Um, see the pass on now. Yeah, pretty much the same. It's just all oak, um, no spirit, drying. Not particularly bitter, it has to be said. The tannins are not bitter, they're, they're just grippy and they're gritty and they're slightly spicy. And like I said, if you like that sort of thing, if you like a lot of oak with your, your whiskey, then, well, that's going to do the job for you. For me, mm, I would just like a little bit more balance. Okay, so let's 
move on to the uh, second uh, reserve cask bottling. This is the uh, pre-stored, um, so initially four years in uh, a 200 litre cask and then uh, seven months in the smaller cask. So hopefully this should be better balanced. And indeed it is. Um, so like I said, you know, this is labelled as elegant, but I'm certainly getting an astringent peat note here. Um, so, I mean, as you know, Mac Myra use, when they finish the, the, the last peated run, they'll basically flush out the tubes, for want of a better word, with the next unpeated run, but they will collect that separately, and they call it smoke tails, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, it really is. Um, and I... I think this could possibly be it, or it just could be mislabeled. Um, anyway, this is a lot more balanced. Um, I'm certainly getting the barley, I'm getting the astringent pea, I'm getting a bit of wood, um, a bit of vanilla. I mean, that is absolutely lovely. And so, this is obviously, for me, this is where I would be going. I would be basically saying, right, let's buy one of these pre-stored casks. Um, I only need to give it sort of six months in in the oak i mean yes they're a little bit more expensive um but by far and away this is the the, the best balanced of the of the two that we've had so far um so it parts like as well as we said um, although it's less bourbony it's less vanilla this that the oak character is a little bit more gritty a little bit more coffee um, there's the peat the astringent sort of slightly herbal notes um, a little bit of fruit again not a huge amount of of, of, uh, of that luscious um, Mac Myra character really spicy aftertaste I mean um, Excuse me, um, <laughs> it's really making my mouth water uh, intensely. I mean, um, and it's not just the, the ABV, which is 55.2%. Um, it's a little bit of toffee. I mean, so far, like I said, I think this is probably the best balanced um, reserve cask bottling. So um, let's see what a, a little drop of water does to it. Now I'm getting a little bit more fruit. Uh, a little bit more oiliness. It's less raw, obviously, because this is it spent four years in the, in the uh, the two hundred litre cast, um, and has actually achieved a modicum of evolution. Um, yeah, some lovely barley notes again. Maybe not quite as tropical as you would expect. Um, the oak is quite gritty again. A little bit toffied, coffee. Yeah, and. Uh, I like I like that. I think that is probably the most successful one so far. Like I said, let's see what the pounds are. Again, still quite woody. Pete has dropped off a little bit, but it's sweetened. It's got a sort of almost kind of violety note to it but um, still quite earthy it's a little bit of stringent saltiness I'm getting that kind of um, wet stone kind of character um, I mean again I mean I'm pretty certain this was uh, yep it's from it was matured in the in the Bodas mines and whether that's kind of in, you know uh, influencing my my taste buds and sort of saying well oh, that could be a stony minerality you know it's aged in the mind but it really does um and um got nice length sweet barley on the finish certainly like i said so far the most uh, the most successful of the reserve cast bottlings Okay, so this is the smoky reserve cast. So this is um, uh, peated spirit, 30 litre ex American oak, not ex bourbon. So I'm guessing a, a possibly virgin uh, American oak, maybe, or they don't say whether it's virgin or if it was, they'd probably say it was virgin. So I imagine this is a, a refill American oak. Uh, 
um, the IDB, the uh, Reserve Council, let's, let's see what those was. Again, quite oaky, um, peppery. I'm getting sort of almost kind of Szechuan pepper, um, sweet pea, barley. The oak is obviously not so bourbon y uh, and a little bit tighter. The spirit is, is obviously, again, quite young, and I'm getting an almost kind of Okantoshini sort of rose petal strawberry kind of uh, note. Um, yeah, now I've said that strawberry, all I can smell is bloody strawberries. God, the power of suggestion, and I'm doing it to myself. Um, I mean, this is one of the things when you're tasting whiskey blind, I mean, obviously I'm not doing it at the moment, but um, you can often get kind of led down the wrong path. You kind of like sort of pick up on a note and then suddenly that's all you can smell and you're going, I'm damn certain this has got to be X, you know. Um, it's a little bit of estuary fruit there. I mean, it's okay. I mean, again, it's not, it's not a huge oak monster, but the oak is obviously, again, the most... Um, noticeable element of this apart from the peat obviously. Um see the pass on. <laughs> Gritty, smoky, earthy, peaty, tannic, again it doesn't quite have, have the sweet um, Macmyra fruit or the sweet vanilla bourbon-y kind of character. It's a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more sort of grabbing you by the nads kind of thing. Um, it's got lovely intensity. I really love the intensity. It's, it, it's, it basically is taking no prisoners, should we say. And again, I'm getting that sort of Szechuan pepper kind of aftertaste and it's really sort of tingling in my cheeks, it has to be said. Um, okay, yep, so that is, I wouldn't say 100% successful, but again, I think if I was going to opt for one of these reserve casts and wasn't going to go down the pre-stored route, then this one seems to work quite well, because again, although there's a lot of oak, the oak is not so bourbony, it's not so like, I can taste what was originally in you, if you see what I mean. So, um, yeah. Right, okay, so let's move on to the final bottling of this afternoon. So this is the um, Oloroso cask, 30 litre Oloroso cask, six years in said cask. Yep, it was an Oloroso cask. Um, uh, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty much like the um, the first one. Pretty much like the the reserve cask. I mean, it is all Oloroso. It's gritty, sorry, tarry, slight molasses, tannic. Um, I mean, spirit character none, absolutely none whatsoever. Um, and yeah, it's just a sherry monster and um, a one-dimensional one at that. I mean, yeah, okay, like I said, you know, there are people that like these things. Um, but to me, again, this is just kind of completely unbalanced. It's all about the cask. Um, I mean, I'm getting absolutely no Mac Myra character whatsoever. I can smell some spirit, um, but, you know, there's no, no fruit, there's no... Yeah, it is just it is just oloroso, and um, it could be from this from anywhere, absolutely anywhere. Um, and you know the same criticism applies pretty much to um, the the gravity cask as well. You know that it's just all I'm getting is cask. I'm getting no spirit, and you know it to me that is not particularly interesting. See what the passage. burnt raisins, 
uh, slightly sort of herbal oloroso, um, dried fruit. Uh, yeah, it's the, it, exactly the same as the nose. It's all about the the oloroso cask, and there is absolutely zero zero distillery character there whatsoever. It's just like I say, it could have that whiskey could have just come from any distillery, um, and. I think if you're going to go for one of these 30 litre Oloroso casks, I think uh, you're probably better off going for a pre-stored uh, cask and then effectively giving it a sort of six month finish in one of these small um, uh, Oloroso casks. Because that is just, it's just wholly and totally and utterly unbalanced um, and really the least interesting. Um, and. Um, and it's peated as well, and, and I don't really, I'm, I'm, yeah, all right, I'm getting a little bit of smokiness, but, you know, um, there's just, you know. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, firstly, uh, a big, big thank you to uh, Mac Meyer for the samples for today's uh episode of the show uh really appreciate your support hopefully uh you don't think i've been unduly unfair um new make absolutely gorgeous like i said if you want to experience um just how lovely new make um mac Meyer is then get yourself a bottle of the vithund um not quite exactly the same but you know it's you know closest as you're going to get to to tasting that um the the gravity cast like i said um Totally and utterly unbalanced, um, you know, no, not my cup of tea at all, um, really, it's just, I mean, even if you kind of like, I think, sort of left it for three years in the cask, it may well have a little bit more balance, but I, I really think that that's not going to be the case, I really think that you're just on a, a hiding to nothing on that particular one. Um, the, the, the pre-stored, um, now like I said, although that this is labelled as an elegant, I don't think it is, um, but uh, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. I think that this obviously to me is where you're at. If you're going to sort of do, uh, if you're going to sort of spend, you know, a couple of grand on, uh, on a cask, then um, to me that is the most successful one because you're essentially just using the 30 litre cask as a finish, you know. Um, so yeah, maybe sort of, you know, a pre-stored, uh, and then Oloroso finish, well, actually worked really quite nicely, but on, on this evidence, um, this has certainly been the most, um, balanced of the, uh, of, of the reserve casks. So probably, like I said, if I was going to do something like this, I, that is what I would do. Um, the, um... The smoky uh, American oak. I, okay, so if you want to do the sort of the full fat version, shall we say, then to me uh, that seems like probably the, the, the best option go for going for the American oak. Um, because if you go for the bourbon, as, as you, we will have seen from the, uh, that particular cask, all you're going to get is the bourbon. At least with the American oak, you don't get all the bourbon character you, you do get a fair amount of American oak but there is a little bit more balance there and if you choose the smoky option as well um, I don't think that, that that works not too badly um, and the smoky Oloroso well you know I think you like I said I think you're on a hiding to nothing if you decide you're going to go with a 30 litre Oloroso for, for longer than probably six months but then you know you're just going to get no, absolutely zero evolution of the spirit whatsoever. Um, well, maybe that could be quite interesting, I don't know. Um, I mean, the, the, the new make spirit is lovely and juicy and fruity, but, you know, um, I, I think it would have probably been, I mean, obviously they couldn't send a million and one of these um, particular samples, you know, so they had to sort of pick and choose, but I would have liked to have seen maybe one or two that were around about sort of maybe three years old or something like that, you know, just to kind of give me an idea of, of how the small casks are going to have uh, affected the, the, the character of the spirit at that kind of point. And, it, and of course, because it's a reserve cask, because it's your own personal bottling, it doesn't have to be three years old. It doesn't have to be legally whiskey in the uh, traditional terms because 
Well, at the end of the day, you're the only one that's drinking it, you know. So, you know, if you want to bottle it at two or even one, um, then why not? Go for it, you know. It doesn't really matter, um, you know. And, uh, it's Like I said, it's not being sold, so, well, anyway. Um, but like I said, I think if, for me personally, I think if you're going to go down this route and do the reserve cast thing, then I would, I would seriously recommend you go for the pre-stored option first because to me that seems to sort of show uh, the best balance um, and uh, the most interesting and most complex uh, or complexity characteristic in, in the, uh, the spirit and you get actually get to sort of taste some of the Matt Myra character as well so um, so yeah there you go that's this week's episode of the show like I said hopefully next week I will be back in the usual location mm. uh, but until then all that's left to say is good afternoon and good grounding <laughs>